Bowling, also known as tenpins, is a game in which heavy balls roll along a long, narrow lane to a group of objects called pins. But for what purpose? Well, the purpose is simple. The heavy balls roll along with a plan of knocking down more pins than the other opponent. Wasn't that easy to understand? To be precise, the game we're talking about is quite distinct from bowling or lawn bowling. In those two games, the only purpose of the latter is to park the ball near a stationary ball called the jack. Whereas there are indeed many forms of bowling that you might have known, as a result, the most extensively used bowling ball is the main form in the United States, Canada, Western Europe, East Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and Latin America. While its multiple variants include duck, candlestick, five pin, nine pin, which are different within the framework of each game. Speaking of how the game is played, let us better understand the rules first. A bowling game consists of 10 frames. In each frame, the bowler will have two chances to knock down as many pins as possible with her bowling ball. If the bowler knocks down all 10 pins in the 10th frame, the bowler is allowed to throw three balls for that frame. Wasn't that easy? But have you ever wondered how the bowling balls are made? Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from our channel, How Is It Made? In this video today, we show you how bowling balls are made. But before jumping to the video, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload new informative and entertaining videos. That said, let's begin. History of Bowling Ball Lawn bowling are the ones that roll on the target ball, and bowling has been played for thousands of years. A set of stone needles was unearthed from the grave of an Egyptian child buried 5,200 years ago, apparently used for bowling. Stating facts in the Middle Ages, lawn bowling was very popular in Europe. In 1366, King Edward III declared the sport illegal, so his army will pay more attention to their archery practice. Thus, in the early 1800s, nine-pin bowling and bowling balls arranged in a diamond pattern were banned in Connecticut and New York. But why? What was the possible reason? Let's break it down for you. It's because it was related to gambling. As a result, this led to the addition of a tenth pin which is arranged in a triangle pattern that is now common to circumvent the law. To be accurate, lawn bowling balls are either heavier or asymmetrically shaped so that they will bend as a roll. The balls managed in bowling must be perfectly round, however, they carry hidden weights that affect their stability and rotation. On the other hand, speaking of the difference between the two is that lawn bowling is that they have finger holes and the other doesn't. They may have two holes, one for the thumb and middle finger, or more generally three, the thumb and middle finger and ring finger. Hence, when the bowler buys the ball, a hole that fits his or her hand is drilled and they're now ready to shoot their perfect shot. Structural Evolution Facts first, most bowling balls were made of woody wood, which is very hardwood. In 1905, the first rubber bowling ball, or called Evertrue, came out, and nine years later, the rubber mineralite ball from Brunswick Corporation followed. While the hard rubber balls dominated the market until polyester balls were developed in the 1970s, in the 1980s, polyurethane bowling balls were introduced. However, in nearly 1990, the design of the ball core changed dramatically. The change was that the reactive polyurethane was introduced as a new cover layer option. Likewise, called resin, the new reactive polyurethane covering combined with an innovative core design revolutionized the sport. Hence, stating some examples of core shapes are namely bulb shape, spherical shape, and oval shape. As a result, the composite core now is made by surrounding a core of individual shape and density and the second core of another shape and density. Speaking of the main core, it can be supplemented by adding a collar or weight to the core or by inserting a small weight individually inside the ball, and for around 1993, bowling ball manufacturers have been using computer design software to frequently improve the core design. And this is the main reason why the design has become so complicated that even for one type of ball, different core designs may be used for different ball weights. The Making of Bowling Ball Raw Material The main material used to manufacture bowling balls is just three types of plastics as covering materials, as polyester is the cheapest and produces the least amount of hooks in the back third of the lane because it's relatively untouched by changes in the amount of oil and the surface of the lane. Hence, it's the first plastic used to cover bowling balls. Speaking of its features, polyurethane balls provide more hooking action than polyester balls, but are more durable and require less maintenance than reactive polyurethane balls, whereas the magnetic ore is made by adding heavy substances such as bismuth graphite or barium to the resin to make a very dense plastic or add it to a ceramic material. To be precise, the fired ceramic core produces a ball that's more difficult to hit because 
the ceramic part of the core doesn't absorb energy. Well, any reasons behind the same? Alright, well, because a fired ceramic core cannot be changed during the finger hole drilling process, while the core is made of a millable ceramic alloy can. Grindable ceramic alloys are made by mixing the ceramic powder with a binder. Compared to fired ceramics, these types of ceramic cores are softer and less vicious, and they do absorb energy when they collide with pins. In some balls, 2 to 4 ounces of iron oxide is used as a counterweight to move the center of gravity of the ball to one side of the core. A manufacturer uses zirconium for the counterweights. Manufacturing process Initially, most bowling balls were made of three-piece construction. Pour a small amount of dense material into a spherical core mold to make a pancake core, and then it filled the rest of the core mold with less dense core material. Finally, it was then placed in the core in the center of the mold and poured a layer of covering material about one inch thick around it. Since manufacturer Fabal Inc. pioneered the two-piece construction method in the early 1990s, this method has become more and more popular. Production For a specific type of ball being manufactured, the mold is formed according to the core shape developed during the computer design process. Pour the appropriate material into the core mold and allow it to harden. The solid core is removed from its mold. A second step may be required to complete the core. For example, some ceramic cores are fired in a kiln. The composite score can be formed by inserting the first core into the second mold and pouring materials of different densities around all or part of the first core. Building of a shell The finished core is placed in a spherical mold called a cover layer. Some examples of bowling ball core shapes are bulbs, spheres, or ellipses. The composite core is made by enclosing a core of one shape and density in the second core of another shape and density. The main core can now be increased by adding a collar or counterweight to the core or by inserting a small counterweight independently inside the ball. The composite core is made by enclosing a core of one shape and density in the second core of another shape and density. The main core can be supplemented by adding a collar or counterweight to the core or by inserting a small counterweight separately inside the ball mold. The core is connected to a pin protruding inward from the mold shell. As a result, the pin set can hold the core in the correct position. If the pin points to the center of the mold, the core is said to have been inserted. If it tilts away from the center, the core is drawn out. It is now poured covering material into the mold and wrapped the core material to harden it. Depending on the design of that particular ball, the thickness of the covering can be as small as 1 inch or as large as 2 inches. Fill in the gaps When the ball is taken out of the cover mold, there is a hole in the position of the fixed core pin. Insert the plastic pin into the hole and fix it in place. The color of the pin is different from the color of the cover. After purchasing the ball, the pin will be used as a guide for locating the finger hole to take advantage of the core design. Filling material is added to the logo imprint molded into the ball. This may be the same color as the pin, or it may be a different color. The logo is located on the top of the ball above the center of gravity. Final Touch By rotating the ball on a lath and scraping off enough covering to get the correct shape, the ball can be processed to the appropriate size or the ball can be ground to the desired size and roundness on a centerless grinder. Finally, the surface of the ball is processed into the desired texture. It is polished to a matte surface or a relevant degree of polishing, as indicated by the roughness of the polished material, usually in the range of 240 to 600 grit. The last and final stage here is, now the ball will be boxed and shipped to the company's dealer. That's it, guys! Let us know if you found this video informative in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Until next time!